television looks with her husband or looks how great this woman is with, with uh, her child or look how powerful this man is with, with his significant other. Trust me on this. It's not as great as it looks. I don't care who it is. I don't care what they say on television. I don't care what they say in the magazines or the interviews or what you see around the neighbor's house. Bottom line is the grass is not greener, ladies and gentlemen. Just water the grass where you at until it gets green. And then when it gets green, see if you can add some fertilizer and make it greener. But definitely work with what you've got. That's what these mothers did in my family. Some of them are from different countries. Some of them have been through uh, setbacks and disappointments. Some of them don't even know who their own mothers are. But they stood up when they found out that they got this word that life was coming through them. They made a decision, you know what, I'm going to work with what I've got. And that's what I want to tell you about your dreams and your goals. Don't, don't get caught up in what you might think someone else has because at the end of the day, you are proud. Priceless. You are magnificent. You are wonderfully made. You have everything you need right inside of you. You were, you came here with it. It's in your DNA. It's in your makeup. You were known by the by the the uh, the one above. I'm not going to get churchy on you. But let's just say whoever you call him to be. You were known by him. Uh, before you were formed in your mother's womb. And so with that, there are things that you might think in your mind, well, if I just had more money or if I just had more support, well, if I just could get my family to back me or if I could just have, you know, if I was a little cuter, if I was a little more handsome or if I was a little taller or if I was shorter or if I was skinnier, listen, I'm, none of that matters at the end of the day. The question is, have you accepted yourself? Have you validated yourself? Have you gotten to a place within your own existence where you understand who and whose you are and you have said, listen, I'm going to put my money on me. I'm going to vote on me because I know that I didn't get here by chance or by accident. The fact that you're even here, the fact that somebody said, yes, I'm going to give birth to this child, and they and they gave birth to you. They made that decision. They work with what they've got. And maybe Maybe they didn't even get a chance to raise you. Maybe they just passed you on to somebody else and a stranger raised you like my daddy. Or maybe they did and they didn't do a good job because they didn't know how to give love because nobody loved them. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day. The bottom line is you're here. The bottom line is you still have breath in your lungs. The bottom line is this is your moment in time. And the question is what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with what you have, your thoughts, your creativity, your ability to create whatever you want, your ability to design a life that others will only dream of, your ability to wake up and do something magnificent each and every day. That's who you are. That's what you're made of. Because you are descendants of those who would not give up, and had they given up, you wouldn't even be here right now. So I encourage you to work with what you've got. I don't care what you're facing right now. I don't even know what you're facing, but I know this about you. You are more powerful than you can ever begin to imagine, and you have more inside of you than you can ever begin to imagine. The question is, how can you stop scraping the surface and just tapping into a little bit of your greatness and your powerful your power and begin to go to your next level of existence, to get to that next level of what's inside of you, what's waiting to come forth. The person that you have not even given birth to, yes, I'm asking you to come back and be born again. And I'm not talking about going back into your mama's womb. I'm talking about how you can wake up to somebody brand new. Let go of who you are for who you can become and understand that if you're willing to take that process, if you're willing to go through that journey, if you're willing to endure the birthing pains, if you're willing to take the time to grow through whatever fears you might have or doubts you might have. And I, I'm sure when a mother has carried a child for nine months, there's, there had to be moments of, of fear, moments of anxiety, moments of concern. Well, I'm sure with great expectation and, and great excitement, but there's also some, some, probably some worry, some concern, some doubt, some fear, all these things that happen when you're giving birth to your dream. It's a process. 
And so getting through those rough days, getting through those pains, getting through the nausea, getting through the headaches, getting through the being uncomfortable and, and not knowing how you can sit right or lay right or not sure what you can, what you can eat or can't eat or you might want to have a glass of wine but you can't have a glass of wine or people smoking so you got to leave out because you don't want to be around people that are smoking because you got something inside of you. You better watch your relationship. You better watch your environment because if you're giving birth to a dream and you're bringing forth something new inside of you and you're getting ready to bring forth a person that hasn't even been here yet, environment is important, ladies and gentlemen. Relationships is important, ladies and gentlemen. You can't just go everywhere, be around anybody, do what you used to do and think it's okay. No, because you are on a mission and that is your your divine appointment is with your destiny that you're here to meet. So stay in your purpose. Work with what you've got. And then finally, I thought about the fact that these months, you know what, they had to hold the vision. They had to hold the vision. The days when the child doesn't want to act right, the days when the child is, doesn't want to sleep, or the days when the child is cranky, or the days when you may not have everything you want to give the child, or the days when the child gets on your last nerve because they're being disrespectful, or they're being uh, mean or hateful, or the days when a child might just be turning out for no good reason, just acting like they don't have no good sense, but you still got to love them as a mother. You still have to hold the vision and press forward and continue continue to do what you're supposed to do as a mother, continue to feel. I know it was so many times my mother probably <laughs> wanted to not even deal with me because I was a handful, trust me. I was not a bad child, but I always had this uh, freedom about me and I always had this uniqueness about me and I always had this uh, uncon unconventional way of thinking and, and being. And so I had all these thoughts that were outside of the box and I never wanted to be boxed in. I wanted to be my own unique expression. And somehow in the midst of that, she would allow me to do that, but I still had to stay within certain parameters, and I still had to respect the fact that she was my mother. And that was a, an interesting balance. And so what I say to you is that when you're working towards your dreams, the circumstances are not going to always be great for you in the midst of that, but you've got to hold the vision because it's, it's easy to say, oh, yeah, I want to be an entrepreneur, but what about when you ain't making no money and the bills are still coming? Or it's easy to say, you know what, I want to launch this idea, but what if you can't get anybody to support you? You can't even get people to call you back that said they were going to call you. You have an event at your house. You can't even get people to show up, and they said they were going to be there. you sitting there eating the chips in the punch by yourself and the dog's looking at you like you're crazy. This is a part of the journey. This is how you have to hold the vision and understand that you can still press forward in the midst of it all. It's a part of the process. That's, there are going to be days when you feel like giving up. Trust me on that. But the question is, will you press forward? Will you hold the vision? Will you continue to do what it is that you decided to do a while ago? When it was easy, it's not just about when it's easy. Yes, it's nice when you have children that will that are cute and and mannerable and respectful, and when they do what you want them to do, and and when they and when things go exactly the way you want them to go, and and when they actually go that extra mile to show you how much they care about you and tell you how much they love you and tell you how much they appreciate you and you see the fruits of your labor and you get to see your, your roses while you are still yet alive. That's beautiful too. But please know, please trust, know, and believe that there are going to be other days when it's not going to be like that. And that's a part of every mother. That's a part of taking something on. I found a definition of mother that I love, and it says something or someone that gives rise to or exercises protecting care over something else. I repeat that something or someone that gives rise to or exercises protecting care over something else. So the question is, will you protect your dream? Will you care for your dream? Will you love your dream? Even when your dream is unlovable? Will you continue to do what it is that you were called to do? Will you honor the purpose and the calling in your heart? Will you be who you were designed to be?
even when it's not easy, even when it doesn't feel good. When I sat there and looked at my great-grandmother, my grandmother, who uh, was sitting in the room and, and looking at her great, great, great grandchild, I thought about how many times she may have felt like throwing in the towel and giving up. I thought about how many times she probably felt like these children are getting on my last nerve. Why did I decide to have them? <laughs> <laughs> but in the midst of it all, there's so much joy. There's so much reward. There's so much pleasure in seeing how you can make it happen. And so we just give thanks for those who said yes, who decided for us to be here. And whether they're, they're perfect or imperfect or whether they are a work in progress or some special people, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is you have life. They gave you life. And the question is, what will you do with your life? And will you decide to honor the life of the dream that is coming through you? Will you work with what you've got? And will you hold the vision even when it's hard, even when it's difficult, even when it may not feel too good and you, you question why you decided to do what you're going to do? Will you hold that vision? And I suggest to you and I invite you, to do those things. I invite you to decide. I invite you to work with what you've got. And I invite you to hold the vision even when it's not easy. And know that you're not out here alone. There are people on this call right now that are going through some of the same stuff that you're going through, been through some of the th same things that you are in the midst of right now. And so if they made it, you can make it. If your ancestors made it, you can make it. If your grandmom and them made it with less resources, less information, less um, money, less contact, less, they didn't have no Facebook friends and they did it. They didn't know nothing about Google and they did it. So if they did it, you can do it. I believe in you. We love you from the Brown family. Live your dreams. And this is Own Your Dreams with Ona Brown. And we love you. Look forward to talking to you another time. In the meantime, pursue what it is that you're here to do and do it with everything you've got. Mm, Miss Ona Brown, what a message tonight. Ona, before we do anything else, please let everyone know how they can stay connected with you so they can get some more of this yummy and delicious nuggets to keep them <laughs> moving along, girl. You laid it down tonight. So how can they stay in touch with you, Ona? Okay, so they can go to the website, which is www.onabrown.com. That's O N A B R O W N dot com. They can actually shoot me an email at coach. Ona Brown at gmail.com, coach Ona Brown at gmail.com, and they can send me a Facebook me or Twitter me, whatever, under Coach Ona Brown as well. And then I've got an Ona Brown account on Facebook as well. So, And then I gave out that number where you can actually register for the speaker training, 305-999-5556. That's 305-999-5556. Excellent, Ona. And I want you to repeat that quote again. Every hour you're not in the middle of your masterpiece. Yes, that is Mike Murdoch. He said, every hour that you are not in the center of your expertise, you are in the middle of your weakness. All right, now, one more time. That's a tweetable moment. <laughs> <laughs> Every hour that you are not in the center of your expertise, you are in the middle of your weakness. Mm, I tell you, I love it. Mr. Mike Murdoch, I thank you. I'll thank him and thank Ona a couple of times before I take that one. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much, Ona, for these words. Your father will be completely thrilled to hear the feedback that everyone is about to post on brown.less. That's brown.less on Facebook. Please go. Ona, are you going to have a chance to go on and interact? Yes, I do. I have some time. Excellent. So everyone, if you have a comment or a question or you want to let Les Brown know how his daughter brought it tonight, please log on to Facebook and